dying. Help me. Hey gamers, it's Artea. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the best ways to earn gold passively while playing the Elder Scrolls Online. And what do I mean by passively here? Well, essentially the opposite of actively. Oh gee, Artie, when you put it that way, it totally makes sense. Alright, let me elaborate. What I mean by passively is that the notion of acquiring gold is not really your main objective while playing, but rather something that happens as a result of doing something else. For example, going from node to node when farming materials or logging in and out of several tunes to complete your daily writs, although effective, are not really passive ways to make gold, since the primary thing that you're doing is essentially grinding for gold by way of actively acquiring materials to sell. A lot of players get turned off by the whole trading aspect of the game because they think that they have to put in a lot of effort to earn gold, or that you have to actively farm for it, when that isn't exactly the case. You can earn gold relatively easily just by playing other aspects of the game. I hope that this video will shed some light on some techniques that you may not be aware of or may have never considered when it comes to earning gold in ESO. Whether you're pugging a random normal or an undaunted pledge, running a trial with friends, or doing overland content like dailies or zone quests, you'll find that you acquire a lot of gear. Instead of selling everything to the merchant, you should be mindful of the kinds of gear that you should be deconstructing. You can deconstruct gear by heading over to a crafting station, selecting the deconstruct button, and clicking on all of the pieces of gear that you'd like to deconstruct. When you decon gear, there is a chance that you can get materials from the deconned items, such as trait materials, style materials, and upgrade materials. There are CP passives and skill passives that will allow you to maximize your chances at getting these materials. Upgrade materials, particularly purple and gold ones, can be sold for a lot. Some style materials, especially style materials that are needed to craft expensive furnishings, are also worth a lot of gold. So after you finish whatever content you're running and you take some time to empty out your inventory, be sure to decon your items instead of just vendoring them to the merchants. The ESO devs do a great job at creating immersive environments, but these environments can serve some purpose, they aren't just pretty to look at. While items such as barrels and boxes do yield cheap materials like coffee and cheese, there's a chance you can actually loot a valuable furnishing recipe from the following items. If you have the Homemaker CP passive, you will also have a chance at looting two recipes instead of just one. While going around and looting things is definitely something that you can actively do, it also isn't all that difficult to passively loot while you play through different aspects of the game either. The items that I mentioned previously are found in Overland content, in Dungeons, and in Trials. I've looted tons of Solitude and Vampire furnishing recipes from the trial Kynes Aegis, just by ducking my head into the little tents and quickly looting all the furniture before speeding off to catch up with the rest of my raid team. I'll loot wardrobes and drawers and urns and dungeons that are full of them, like Moonhunter Keep or Ice Reach. If you're in the area anyways, it takes two seconds to angle your camera towards an item to loot it, so you may as well. You may just luck out. Motifs are great items to sell, fashion's the true end game after all, and are for the most part acquired pretty passively. Unlike the previous two suggestions, which don't really take that much skill, you will find that the likeliness of you acquiring a motif improves with your level of skill in this game. For example, you are guaranteed a motif if you complete a DLC dungeon at the Veteran Hard Mode difficulty whereas you only have a chance to get a motif if you complete one at the veteran difficulty, and that chance lowers significantly if you only complete one on normal difficulty. The same model can be applied to most trials as well. Something to keep in mind when selling motifs is the notion of supply and demand. 
If a new style drops from a DLC dungeon and you happen to get your hands on a motif page, be sure to list it for higher than what other DLC dungeon motifs go for. For the first couple days of its release, there will be a heightened demand for this motif since it's new and people are going to want it. And there will be little supply of it because it's new <laughs> and not many players have had the chance to acquire it organically. However, do keep in mind the current crown to gold ratio when coming up with prices for motifs. Price them too high and buyers will simply buy the entire style from the crown store for gold. Motifs or style pages that cannot be purchased from the crown store can always and should always be worth more than motifs and style pages that can. Honestly, PvP is an amazing way to passively make gold. PvPing in Battlegrounds and Cyrodiil rewards you with alliance points, whereas PvPing in the Imperial City rewards you with mostly Telvar. Both currencies are extremely valuable and can easily be converted into gold. I have videos on my channel that discuss all the best ways to turn these PvP currencies into gold that I'll link in the description if you want to watch a more in-depth guide on the matter. Whether you're a proud zergling or a sweaty 1vxer, Whatever means are necessary for you to obtain AP are also means that can make you a lot of gold. So if PvP is something that you enjoy doing, you're in luck. Got any spare skill points? If so, I would highly recommend investing in the different hireling passives for each crafting skill. At max level, these hirelings send you a mail every 12 hours, once you log in, filled with crafting goodies. Sometimes these hirelings can bring you gold upgrade materials, and even when they don't, hirelings are a great way to passively accumulate all kinds of materials, all from simply logging into a character that has the hireling passives. That's some easy gold right there. Plus, the messages that they leave you are top tier. There are many reasons as to why you may want to scry and excavate in ESO. Perhaps you're looking to create a mythic item for a build that is totally balanced and not broken and overperforming whatsoever. <coughs> or maybe you're looking to dig up a nice piece of furniture for your home because housing's endgame, or an ancestral motif because fashion is also endgame. Whatever the case may be, you can actually accumulate a handful of items that can sell pretty well while you dig up antiquities. If you have a successful dig, you can accumulate style materials for the ancestral motifs. Because there are so little of these on the market, you can sell them for a fair amount. I've managed to sell my etched materials for over 10k a piece. You can also sell the Indeco runes that you can sometimes receive from digging. There's also a chance that you can get a piece of gear from the zone that you're digging in. Keep up to date with what sets are currently hot sellers because you never know, you could be digging up a set piece that's actually worth quite a bit. Once you've completed 30 quests for the Dragon Guard located in a small island in Southern Elsewhere, you can unlock a Dragon Guard Sanctum supply chest. It's located right in front of Dirge Trupter's stall and can be interacted with once per day. Looting this chest provides you with very valuable dragon materials, as well as alchemy materials, and the chance to get some pretty expensive furnishing plans. If you enjoy questing or are into achievement hunting, it's definitely worthwhile to prioritize these quests so that you can unlock a daily source of valuable materials. All you have to do is port to Tideholm once per day to retrieve them. Easy money. Those are some of what I think are the best ways to earn gold passively while you play ESO. Did I miss anything? If you guys can think of any other amazing ways that you can earn gold passively while you play some other facet of the game that isn't directly related to farming gold itself, you should totally let me know by leaving a comment. It can really help others out. Thanks for tuning in gamers, I will see you in the next video. Cheers!